the National Aeronautics and Space Administration has been responsible for numerous incredible achievements and has made countless discoveries. It is one of the most prestigious research agencies in the world and one of the first to conduct space explorations. Since the first launch of a ship into space, there have been many technological advances and discoveries whose protagonists have been the agency's researchers. However, NASA officials have also been responsible for several errors and failures, which shows that regardless of the studies or experience they may have, it's still possible to make mistakes. It's no secret that only a few of these mistakes have been exposed to the public. One significant mistake made by NASA was losing the original footage of the first moonwalk. NASA officials claim to have searched for these missing tapes since their disappearance was confirmed. NASA have stated that the tapes were simply misplaced, but many people doubt this due to the vast number of tapes that must have been lost. The question is, how did they lose such valuable tapes? Before the tapes were lost, clips from the footage were broadcasted on television. These first steps of man on the moon were an unparalleled achievement in space travel at the time, and therefore, it seems unbelievable that these tapes could have been misplaced so easily. Many theories were created regarding the whereabouts of the missing tapes. Some say that they were hidden from the public for security reasons, and others say that they really were lost. And there are some slightly more complex theories too. One of the theories, created by a community of people who don't trust the credibility of NASA, states that mankind has never set foot on the moon. This theory is based on the idea that the tapes weren't really lost, they just never actually existed. The theorists believe that the lunar missions from 1969 to 1972 weren't real, but were recorded on a film set hidden in a military base. However, in recent years these missing tapes were found. It's believed that more than 200,000 tapes of recordings were considered not important by NASA and were demagnetized to be reused for other occasions and therefore ended up at auction. A NASA intern purchased approximately 65 boxes of these magnetic tapes in an auction. Not knowing that the tapes had such important footage on them, the intern planned to sell the tapes onto a television station where they would have to be recycled and used for new recordings. However, the intern then noticed a label on the outside of the boxes, identifying them as the Apollo 11 mission. The intern had heard the story of the lost tapes and therefore found a way to play the tapes in order to identify them. Once they were confirmed as the missing tapes, approximately two and a half hours of footage was recovered and digitalized. NASA's comments on the subject were as follows. If the tapes are as described in the sale material, their two-inch videotapes recorded in Houston from the video that had been converted to a format that could be broadcast over commercial television and contain no material that hasn't been preserved at NASA. Another failure was that of NASA's Carbon Observatory. One of NASA's most impressive designs was that of a Carbon Observatory. This had the sole purpose of providing information of the atmosphere to researchers. It was able to keep track of irregularities and discoveries. It said that it took NASA researchers and technical teams approximately 10 years to create the observatory. This spacecraft was launched on the 24th of February 2009 and failed to meet the objectives that had been set in its development. This ultimately meant a great loss, not only for the scientific advances, but a huge investment had been made in the construction of such a carbon observatory. Some sources state that it's possible that the failures in its launch were due to the defective materials that were used in its construction, provided by an aluminium factory who received a lawsuit after obtaining evidence the failures could have been caused by its materials. Fairing is a disposable component used by all launch vehicles. It works by protecting the useful part of the ship from air friction or any damage. These fairings should be discarded as soon as possible so that it doesn't produce any extra weight on the rocket. The protector of the useful part of the rocket did not separate while the rocket was ascending, so the weight from it prevented the satellite from reaching orbit, which made it return to the atmosphere and then crash into the Indian Ocean. The Carbon Observatory had to release the fairing after stage 2 of ignition. 
As in stage 3, the ship didn't reach enough speed to enter orbit, it ended up crashing 17 minutes after takeoff. The next failure is that of the Mars Climate Orbiter failure. The Mars Climate Orbiter was part of a research project at NASA. It was a probe that was designed and launched into space on the 11th of December 1998. The space rocket that transported it managed to reach Mars more than nine months later. This was on the 23rd of September in the following year. The main objective of the probe's launch to space was to study its climate and all the atmospheric variables. The study of the planet's geology was important and the researchers wanted to learn more about it. These probes were designed to study the elements found on Mars, understand how they accumulate and how they interact with the surface and the atmosphere. This probe was designed to last the equivalent of two Earth years over the territory of Mars and was supposed to be transmitting all the data obtained to the Earth. However, the mission wouldn't go as planned and unfortunately the climate orbiter crashed on Mars. This has been a situation that has brought much debate in the scientific world since it's been confirmed that the failure of this mission was caused by a confusion between two methods of distance measurement. Some have suggested this came down to confusion in calculus. The Mars Climate Orbiter was built to understand directions using the Imperial Measuring System, but at the time of takeoff, the flight orders it received were given using the metric system. This confusion caused the destruction of the ship because the command team that was on the ground used these wrong measurements. After the start of the Mars Weather Orbiter engine, the speed had to be altered in an unexpected way, and after a long amount of time, this failure had not been visible for the command control. It was during the last days of flight that it became obvious that the spacecraft was moving further and further away from the original trajectory, approaching Mars at a much shorter distance than established. This ultimately caused its destruction due to the friction of the planet. When we talk about navigation in space, we can't leave aside the importance of precision. A confusion in metric systems with enormous differences can cause enormous catastrophes. Nowadays, the question that many people ask themselves is, has this happened before in previous missions that we don't know about? Some man-made errors such as all sorts of confusions, miscalculations, defective materials or machines show us that despite the advances in technology, there are still many limitations around us, and that exploring space is a massive task, one that we're not likely to perfect anytime soon. However, research never stops, and despite the mistakes that NASA may have made in previous missions, it still has an incredible track record. NASA are looking to the future. NASA have said they're working hard to try and get astronauts on the lunar south pole by 2024. It seems they're one step closer to this as they have just tested their new launch abort system in Florida. This is part of NASA's new Orion spacecraft and it's a capsule that will be able to take humans to the moon and bring them back again. The test that happened a few days ago is showing the researchers that they're closer than ever to getting people back to the moon. Astronaut Randy Bresnik said the following, This is the fastest accelerating launch abort system ever designed. The neat part is, the next time this launch abort system flies, there will be a crew underneath it. NASA engineers who were observing the test said the following. The rocket travelling to 45,000 feet or 14,700 meters shortly after the launch abort structure on the top of the capsule fired and pulled the Orion capsule from the rocket. During this, the rocket was travelling at 800 miles per hour or 1,300 kilometers per hour. It's believed that the capsule landed in the ocean and broke up. It didn't deploy any parachutes as the researchers only wanted to test the abort system and that worked fine. NASA team are already saying it's a big improvement over the Apollo system. It's also been suggested this technology could be used to send people to Mars. So what do you make of these NASA mistakes? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.